Chapter One. In the beginning, long before Europeans arrived, diverse indigenous peoples lived across North America for thousands of years. There were many different tribes, each with its own unique culture, language, and way of life. Some of the first inhabitants crossed a land bridge called Beringia from Asia into present-day Alaska around 15,000 to 30,000 years ago. Over time, these early people spread out and settled throughout the continent, adapting to various environments and forming complex societies. In the southwest, the ancestral Puebloans built impressive cliff dwellings and developed advanced irrigation systems for farming. The Hohokam and the Mogollon were also skilled farmers and pottery makers in this region. The Mississippian culture, centered around the Mississippi River and its tributaries, built large earthen mounds for ceremonial and burial purposes. Their largest city, Cahokia, was home to around 10,000 to 20,000 people at its peak around 1100 AD. In the eastern woodlands, tribes like the Iroquois and the Algonquians lived in villages and practiced a mix of hunting, fishing, and farming. The Iroquois Confederacy, a political alliance of five, later six, tribes, played a significant role in the region's history. On the Great Plains, tribes like the Sioux, Comanche, and Cheyenne relied on the buffalo for food, clothing, and shelter. They were skilled hunters and horse riders, and lived in teepees, which were easy to set up and take down. In the Pacific Northwest, tribes like the Tlingit, Haida, and Quakeetl thrived in the region's abundant natural resources. They built large, intricately carved wooden houses and totem poles, and were skilled fishermen, hunters, and gatherers. These indigenous peoples shaped the early history of the continent, and their cultures, languages, and traditions continue to influence modern America. As we move on to the next chapter, we'll see how the arrival of the pilgrims and other European settlers would forever change the lives of these indigenous peoples and the land they called home. Chapter Two: The Pilgrim Fathers. In the early 17th century. A group of English religious separatists, known as the Pilgrims, decided to leave their homeland in search of religious freedom. They had faced persecution for their beliefs in England and wanted to establish a community where they could practice their religion without interference. In September 1620, around 100 Pilgrims, including men, women, and children, boarded the Mayflower, a small ship that would carry them across the Atlantic Ocean to the New World. The journey was long and difficult, with rough seas and cramped living conditions. After more than two months at sea, they finally sighted land on November 9, 1620. The Pilgrims originally planned to settle near the mouth of the Hudson River in present-day New York, but they were blown off course and arrived in Cape Cod in present-day Massachusetts. After exploring the area, they decided to establish their settlement at a place they named Plymouth. The first winter in Plymouth was harsh, with many pilgrims suffering from cold, hunger, and illness. Nearly half of the settlers died during that first winter. However, the survivors were determined to build a life in their new home. In the spring, they began planting crops and constructing houses. The pilgrims were not the first Europeans to arrive in North America, nor were they the first to interact with the indigenous peoples who lived there. The Native Americans had already encountered European explorers and fishermen in the past. However, the Pilgrims' arrival marked a significant change in the relationship between the indigenous peoples and the newcomers. The Wampanoag tribe, led by Chief Massasoit, played a crucial role in the survival of the Pilgrims. They taught the settlers how to grow native crops like corn, beans, and squash, as well as how to fish and hunt local wildlife. In the fall of 1621, the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag came together to celebrate a successful harvest in a feast that is now considered the first Thanksgiving. Despite the cooperation between the Pilgrims and the Wampanoag, 
Tensions arose as more English settlers arrived and expanded their settlements. As we move on to the next chapter, we'll learn how these tensions contributed to the War of Independence and the formation of the United States. Chapter 3 The War of Independence As more and more English settlers arrived in North America, tensions between the British government and the 13 colonies grew. One of the main causes of these tensions was the issue of taxation. After the French and Indian War, 1754-1763, Britain faced a large national debt and sought to raise funds by taxing its American colonies. In 1765, the British Parliament passed the Stamp Act, which required colonists to pay a tax on various printed materials such as newspapers, legal documents, and playing cards. Many colonists were outraged by this new tax as they believed it was unfair for the British government to tax them without their consent. The slogan, No Taxation Without Representation, became a rallying cry for the colonists who began to protest and boycott British goods. The British government eventually repealed the Stamp Act in 1766, but tensions continued to rise as new taxes were imposed, such as the Townshend Acts in 1767. In response to these taxes, the colonists organized more boycotts and protests, culminating in the Boston Tea Party in 1773. This act of defiance saw a group of colonists, disguised as Native Americans, hump 342 chests of British tea into Boston Harbor. In retaliation, the British government passed the Intolerable Acts in 1774, which aimed to punish the people of Massachusetts for their defiance. This only served to further unite the colonists against British rule. In September 1774, representatives from 12 of the 13 colonies met in Philadelphia for the First Continental Congress, where they demanded the repeal of the Intolerable Acts and called for a boycott of British goods. The situation escalated in April 1775 when British troops and American colonists clashed in the battles of Lexington and Concord. These skirmishes marked the beginning of the American Revolution, a war for independence that would last until 1783. The colonies formed the Continental Army, led by General George Washington, to fight against the British forces. On July 4, 1776, the Second Continental Congress adopted the Declaration of Independence, which formally announced the colonies' intention to break away from British rule. The Revolutionary War was a difficult struggle for the American colonies as they faced a powerful enemy with a well-trained and well-equipped army. However, the colonists were determined and resourceful, and they received support from other nations, most notably France. The war reached a turning point in 1781 when the British army, led by General Charles Cornwallis, was defeated at the Battle of Yorktown in Virginia. This victory convinced the British government to begin peace negotiations with the American colonies. In 1783, the Treaty of Paris was signed, officially recognizing the United States as an independent nation and establishing its borders. With independence secured, the newly formed United States faced the challenge of creating a stable and effective system of government. As we continue to the next chapter, we'll explore the Civil War, a conflict that would threaten the unity and future of the young nation. Chapter 4 The Civil War The issue of slavery had been a contentious topic in the United States since its founding. Tensions between the northern states, where slavery was largely opposed, and the southern states, whose economies relied heavily on slave labor, grew over the years. The situation was further exacerbated by disputes over whether new territories and states should be allowed to practice slavery. In the 1850s, 
A series of events fueled the division between the North and the South. The Fugitive Slave Act of 1850 required Northern citizens to assist in the capture and return of runaway slaves, angering many Northerners. The 1854 Kansas-Nebraska Act allowed the people of these territories to decide for themselves whether to permit slavery, leading to violent clashes between pro- and anti-slavery settlers. The election of Abraham Lincoln as the 16th President of the United States in 1860 proved to be the tipping point. Lincoln, a member of the newly formed Republican Party, opposed the expansion of slavery into new territories. In response to his election, 11 southern states seceded from the Union, forming the Confederate States of America, led by President Jefferson Davis. The Civil War began on April 12, 1861 when Confederate forces attacked Fort Sumter in South Carolina. The Union, comprising the northern states, was determined to preserve the United States and abolish slavery. The Confederacy, made up of the southern states, sought to maintain its independence and protect its way of life, which included the institution of slavery. The early years of the war were difficult for the Union, as the Confederacy won several key battles. However, the Union's larger population, industrial strength, and superior resources eventually began to turn the tide of the war in its favor. In 1863, President Lincoln issued the Emancipation Proclamation, which declared that all slaves in Confederate-held territory were to be set free. As the war progressed, the Union achieved several important victories, including the battles of Gettysburg and Vicksburg in 1863. These battles weakened the Confederate Army and helped to shift the momentum of the war. In 1864, General Ulysses S. Grant was appointed commander of all Union armies and launched a series of campaigns that would ultimately lead to the Confederacy's defeat. The Civil War officially ended on April 9, 1865, when Confederate General Robert E. Lee surrendered to General Grant at Appomattox Courthouse in Virginia. The war resulted in the deaths of more than 600,000 soldiers and civilians, making it the deadliest conflict in U.S. history. The Union's victory led to the abolition of slavery, with the 13th Amendment to the Constitution formally outlawing the practice in 1865. Following the war, the United States entered a period of reconstruction, as the nation struggled to heal its wounds and rebuild its devastated southern states. The legacy of the Civil War and the end of slavery would shape the nation for decades to come, as we'll see in the following chapters. Chapter 5 The Wild West Following the Civil War, the United States entered a period of rapid westward expansion often referred to as the Wild West. This era, which lasted from the late 19th to the early 20th century, was marked by the settlement of vast territories, conflicts with Native Americans, and the growth of the cattle and mining industries. The Homestead Act of 1862 played a crucial role in encouraging westward expansion. This law provided 160 acres of public land to settlers for a small fee as long as they built a dwelling and cultivated the land for at least five years. Thousands of people, including former slaves, immigrants, and veterans, took advantage of this opportunity to claim their own piece of land. The construction of the Transcontinental Railroad, completed in 1869, also facilitated westward migration. The railroad connected the eastern and western coasts of the United States, making travel and trade between the two regions much easier. The availability of jobs in railroad construction attracted many immigrants, particularly from China and Ireland. As settlers moved west, they often came into conflict with Native American tribes who had lived on the land for generations. The U.S. government frequently signed treaties with these tribes, promising them land and resources in exchange for peace. However, many of these treaties were broken, leading to violence and forced relocation of Native Americans onto reservations. 
the cattle industry thrived during the Wild West era. Cowboys herded cattle from Texas to railheads in Kansas, where the cattle would be transported by train to markets in the East. This practice, known as the cattle drive, became a central aspect of cowboy culture and the image of the rugged. Independent cowboy became an iconic symbol of the American West. Mining also played a significant role in the development of the Wild West. Gold and silver rushes in states such as California, Colorado, and Nevada attracted thousands of prospectors who hoped to strike it rich. Boomtowns sprang up around these mining operations, some of which eventually grew into major cities such as Denver and San Francisco. The Wild West era has been mythologized in American culture through stories, movies, and television shows that often romanticize the adventures of cowboys, outlaws, and lawmen. While many of these tales are exaggerated or fictionalized, they have helped to shape our understanding of this important period in American history. As the Wild West era came to a close, the United States continued to evolve, with ongoing struggles for civil rights and the integration of new immigrants into American society. In the chapters that follow, we will explore the diverse experiences of Native Americans, African Americans, and immigrants, as well as the development of American government, culture, and daily life. Chapter 6 Native Americans Long before Europeans arrived in the Americas, indigenous peoples had inhabited the land for thousands of years. With diverse cultures, languages, and ways of life, these native peoples developed complex societies that still influence modern America. Their history has been marked by displacement, violence, and discrimination, as well as efforts to preserve and revitalize their cultures. Native American societies varied greatly across North America, with distinct tribes and cultural groups forming in different regions. In the Pacific Northwest, tribes like the Haida and Tlingit relied on the abundant resources of the sea and forests, developing sophisticated woodworking and carving techniques. In the Great Plains, tribes such as the Sioux and Cheyenne were nomadic, hunting buffalo and adapting to life on the vast grasslands. The Pueblo peoples of the Southwest built impressive adobe structures and cultivated crops like corn, beans, and squash. When European settlers arrived, they introduced new diseases, weapons, and technologies that significantly impacted Native American societies. Diseases like smallpox, measles, and influenza spread rapidly, decimating Native populations who had no immunity to these illnesses. Conflicts between Europeans and Native Americans often arose due to competition for land and resources. Throughout the years, the U.S. government negotiated numerous treaties with Native American tribes, promising land, resources, and protection. Unfortunately, many of these treaties were broken, leading to further violence and displacement. The forced relocation of tribes, such as the Cherokee during the Trail of Tears, remains a dark and painful chapter in American history. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw a series of policies designed to assimilate Native Americans into mainstream American society. Boarding schools were established to teach Native children English and European customs, often at the expense of their own language and traditions. The Dawes Act of 1887 sought to divide tribal lands into individual allotments further disrupting traditional ways of life. Despite these challenges, Native Americans have persevered and worked to preserve their cultures and traditions. The 20th century saw a resurgence of cultural pride and activism, with events like the occupation of Alcatraz Island and the founding of the American Indian Movement. Today, many tribes operate their own governments, schools, and cultural institutions, working to protect their heritage and promote understanding of their history. As we continue our journey through American history, we will explore the stories of immigrants who arrive from all over the world, seeking new opportunities and shaping the nation's economic, social, and cultural development. Chapter 7 New Americans 
Throughout its history, the United States has been a nation of immigrants with waves of people arriving from all over the world. These immigrants have contributed significantly to the nation's economic, social, and cultural development, helping to shape the diverse and dynamic country we know today. The first significant wave of immigration occurred in the early 19th century when millions of Europeans, particularly from Ireland and Germany, came to the United States in search of better opportunities. The Irish, fleeing the Great Famine, often settled in urban areas like New York City and Boston, while Germans established farming communities in the Midwest. These immigrants brought their languages, customs, and culinary traditions with them, enriching American culture. The late 19th and early 20th centuries saw even larger waves of immigration, with people arriving from countries like Italy, Poland, Russia, and Greece. Many of these immigrants settled in major cities, creating vibrant ethnic neighborhoods such as New York City's Little Italy and Chicago's Greek Town. The influx of workers also fueled the growth of American industry, with immigrants toiling in factories, mines, and railroads. During this time, Asian immigrants began to arrive in significant numbers as well. Chinese laborers, for instance, played a crucial role in building the Transcontinental Railroad, while Japanese immigrants settled in California to work in agriculture. However, these immigrants faced discrimination and restrictive immigration laws, such as the Chinese Exclusion Act of 1882. The early 20th century also saw a rise in immigration from Latin America, particularly from Mexico. Mexican immigrants have made significant contributions to American agriculture and industry. And their cultural influence can be seen in the popularity of Mexican cuisine and music throughout the United States. In the decades following World War II, the United States experienced another wave of immigration, with people arriving from all corners of the globe. The Immigration and Nationality Act of 1965 eliminated the discriminatory national origin quotas, leading to increased immigration from Asia, Africa, and Latin America. Today, immigrants from countries such as India, China, the Philippines, and many others continue to make significant contributions to American society. As we move forward in our exploration of American history, we will delve into the complex and often painful experiences of African Americans. We will examine their struggle for civil rights, their cultural contributions, and their ongoing fight against institutional racism. Chapter 8. Black Americans African Americans have a long and complex history in the United States beginning with the forced migration of enslaved people from Africa. They have faced institutional racism and fought for civil rights, contributing greatly to American society, culture, and politics. The first Africans arrived in the English colonies in 1619, brought to the shores of Virginia as enslaved laborers. Over the next two centuries, millions of Africans were forcibly brought to the Americas through the brutal transatlantic slave trade. Enduring unimaginable suffering and separation from their families and cultures. Enslaved Africans were forced to work on plantations throughout the American South, where they cultivated crops such as tobacco, rice, and cotton. They lived under harsh conditions, subjected to brutal punishments, and denied basic human rights. Despite these challenges, they developed a strong sense of community, maintaining cultural practices and traditions through music, dance and storytelling. The fight to end slavery in the United States culminated in the Civil War, 1861-1865, a conflict that pitted the Union, Northern States, against the Confederacy, Southern States. The Union's victory led to the abolition of slavery through the 13th Amendment to the Constitution. However, the end of slavery did not mean the end of racial oppression for African Americans. During the Reconstruction era, 1865 to 1877, 
the federal government attempted to implement policies to help newly freed black Americans, such as granting them the right to vote and providing education. However, southern states quickly enacted discriminatory laws known as Black Codes to restrict their rights, and white supremacist groups like the Ku Klux Klan used violence to intimidate and terrorize them. The early 20th century saw the Great Migration, a mass movement of African Americans from the rural South to urban areas in the North, Midwest, and West. They sought better job opportunities and an escape from the harsh segregationist policies of the South. This migration led to the growth of vibrant black communities in cities such as New York, Chicago, and Los Angeles. The 1950s and 1960s marked the height of the civil rights movement, a struggle for racial equality led by courageous activists like Martin Luther King Jr., Rosa Parks, and Malcolm X. Through nonviolent protests, legal challenges, and grassroots organizing, the movement achieved significant victories, including the desegregation of public schools. The passage of the Civil Rights Act of 1964 and the Voting Rights Act of 1965. African Americans have made invaluable contributions to American culture and society, excelling in fields such as literature, music, and sports. Writers like Langston Hughes and Zora Neale Hurston were part of the Harlem Renaissance, a cultural movement of the 1920s that celebrated black art and creativity. Iconic musicians like Louis Armstrong, Ella Fitzgerald, and Chuck Berry transformed American music, while athletes like Jackie Robinson and Serena Williams broke racial barriers and inspired millions. In the next chapter, we will explore the government of the United States and the way it is structured to maintain balance and protect the rights of its citizens. Chapter 9 The Government of the USA the United States has a federal system of government with power divided between the national, state, and local levels. The Constitution established three branches of government, the executive, headed by the president, the legislative, Congress, and the judicial, Supreme Court. The U.S. Constitution, adopted in 1787, established the framework for the nation's government. It outlines the responsibilities and powers of the three branches as well as the system of checks and balances to prevent any single branch from becoming too powerful. The executive branch is led by the president, who serves as the nation's head of state and chief executive officer. The president is responsible for enforcing federal laws, conducting foreign policy, and commanding the armed forces. The president is elected to a four-year term and can serve a maximum of two terms. The vice president supports the president and assumes the role if the president is unable to fulfill their duties. The legislative branch, known as Congress, consists of two chambers, the House of Representatives and the Senate. The House has 435 members, with each state's representation based on its population. Representatives serve two-year terms and can be re-elected indefinitely. The Senate has 100 members, with two senators from each state. Senators serve six-year terms, with one-third of the Senate up for election every two years. Congress is responsible for making federal laws regulating commerce, declaring war, and overseeing the federal budget. Through the system of checks and balances, the president can veto bills passed by Congress, while Congress can override a veto with a two-thirds majority vote in both chambers. Additionally, the Senate must confirm presidential appointments, including those to the Supreme Court. The judicial branch, headed by the Supreme Court, interprets the Constitution and federal laws. The court consists of nine justices, nominated by the President and confirmed by the Senate. Justices serve lifetime appointments, providing them with independence from political pressures. 
The court's decisions have far-reaching impacts on American society, shaping the interpretation of civil rights, individual liberties, and the scope of government power. State and local governments play essential roles in the federal system. Each state has its own constitution and government structure, generally mirroring the national model with executive, legislative, and judicial branches. Local governments, such as city and county governments, manage community-specific issues like public safety, education, and infrastructure. In the next chapter, we will discuss life in the United States, focusing on the values, culture, and challenges faced by Americans in their everyday lives. Chapter 10. Living in the USA. The United States is a diverse and dynamic country with a high standard of living. Americans value individualism, hard work, and freedom. They face challenges related to health care, education, and social inequalities. Life in the United States is shaped by a variety of factors, including its rich history, cultural diversity, and economic opportunities. The country is known for its entrepreneurial spirit, which has led to innovations in various fields, such as technology, entertainment, and science. American values emphasize individualism and personal freedom. The idea of the American dream has long been a driving force in the country, with many people believing that hard work and determination can lead to success and a better life. This has attracted immigrants from around the world, seeking opportunities and a chance to build a brighter future for themselves and their families. Education plays a significant role in American society, with many people striving to attain a higher level of education to improve their job prospects and quality of life. The United States has some of the world's top universities, but access to quality education can vary depending on factors such as location, income, and race. Many Americans face challenges related to student loan debt and the rising cost of college tuition. Healthcare is another critical issue in the United States. While the country has advanced medical facilities and research institutions, access to healthcare can be challenging due to high costs and a lack of universal coverage. The Affordable Care Act, enacted in 2010, aimed to address some of these issues but healthcare remains a contentious topic in American politics. Social inequalities persist in the United States, with disparities in income, educational opportunities, and access to resources affecting different segments of the population. Many communities face challenges related to poverty, unemployment, and crime. Efforts to address these issues include social welfare programs, community outreach, and advocacy for policy reform. In the next chapter, we will explore American cuisine and its diverse influences, from regional traditions to the various immigrant communities that have contributed to the country's culinary landscape. We will also discuss the popularity of fast food and the growing interest in organic and locally sourced food options. Chapter 11 Eating and Drinking the American Way American cuisine is influenced by the nation's diverse population and regional traditions. Iconic foods include hamburgers, hot dogs, fried chicken, and apple pie. Fast food is popular, but there is also a growing interest in organic and locally sourced food. The development of American cuisine has been shaped by various factors such as immigration, regional agricultural resources, and cultural exchange. Early settlers from Europe brought their culinary traditions, which were then adapted to local ingredients and cooking methods. The Native American population also influenced American cuisine, introducing ingredients like corn, beans, and squash, as well as techniques such as smoking and barbecuing. Throughout its history, the United States has welcomed immigrants from all over the world, each bringing their unique culinary traditions. This has led to a diverse and ever-evolving food landscape with dishes like pizza, tacos, and sushi becoming integral parts of American cuisine. 
Regional dishes and cooking styles also play an important role in the country's culinary identity. For example, the southern United States is known for its soul food, which has African and European influences and typically includes dishes like fried chicken, collard greens, and cornbread. In contrast, the Southwest region has a strong Mexican influence with dishes like burritos, enchiladas, and tamales being popular. Fast food has become a significant aspect of American food culture, with chains like McDonald's, Burger King, and KFC gaining popularity both domestically and internationally. While fast food is convenient and affordable, it has also been linked to health issues such as obesity and heart disease. In recent years, there has been a growing interest in healthier eating options with a focus on organic, locally sourced, and plant-based foods. Farmers' markets have also gained popularity, offering fresh, seasonal produce and providing an opportunity for consumers to support local farmers and small businesses. Additionally, the farm-to-table movement encourages restaurants to source ingredients from local farms, fostering a more sustainable food system. In the next chapter, we will delve into the rich history of American music, exploring genres such as blues, jazz, gospel, rock and roll, country, and hip-hop. We will examine the country's role as a global leader in the music industry and discuss some of the most influential musicians who have shaped American music. Chapter 12 Music from America American music has a rich history from the blues, jazz, and gospel to rock and roll, country, and hip-hop. The United States has produced many influential musicians and has been a global leader in the music industry. The roots of American music can be traced back to the diverse cultural influences of its inhabitants. Early Native American music featured instruments such as drums, flutes, and rattles, while European settlers brought their own musical traditions, which eventually blended with African rhythms brought by enslaved people. One of the first uniquely American music genres to develop was the blues, which originated in the Deep South in the late 19th century. The blues emerged from African-American spirituals, work songs, and field hollers, and was characterized by its emotive lyrics and distinctive chord progressions. Notable blues musicians include Bessie Smith, Muddy Waters, and B.B. K.N.G. In the early 20th century, jazz emerged in the vibrant African-American communities of New Orleans, Chicago, and New York City. Jazz was a fusion of blues, ragtime, and brass band music, characterized by improvisation, syncopation, and complex harmonies. Iconic jazz musicians include Louis Armstrong, Duke Ellington, and Ella Fitzgerald. Gospel music, which developed in the early 20th century, was a combination of African-American spirituals, blues, and jazz. Gospel music has strong roots in the Christian church and is characterized by its powerful vocals and uplifting lyrics. Mahalia Jackson and Thomas A. Dorsey are among the influential figures in the gospel music genre. Rock and roll emerged in the 1950s, blending rhythm and blues, gospel, and country music. This energetic and rebellious music style became popular among young people and was personified by musicians such as Elvis Presley, Chuck Berry, and Little Richard. Country music has its origins in the folk music of early European settlers, particularly from the British Isles. This music style evolved over time, incorporating elements from blues and gospel music. Key country musicians include Johnny Cash, Dolly Parton, and Willie Nelson. Hip-hop originated in the 1970s in the African-American and Latinx communities of the Bronx, New York City. This innovative genre encompasses rapping, DJing, breakdancing, and graffiti art. Influential hip-hop artists include Grandmaster Flash, Run DMC, and Tupac Shocker. In the next chapter, we will explore some of America's great cities, including New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and San Francisco. Each of these cities has its own unique culture, architecture, and attractions, 
reflecting the diverse and dynamic nature of the United States. Chapter 13 Some Great American Cities New York City, Los Angeles, Chicago, and San Francisco are among the nation's most iconic cities, each with its own unique culture, architecture, and attractions. New York City, located in the state of New York, is the most populous city in the United States. Known as the Big Apple, it is a global hub for finance, media, and culture. The city comprises five boroughs, Manhattan, Brooklyn, Queens, the Bronx, and Staten Island. Iconic landmarks in New York City include the Statue of Liberty Times Square, Central Park, and the Empire State Building. The city's rich cultural history is reflected in its diverse neighborhoods such as Little Italy, Chinatown, and Harlem. Los Angeles, situated in Southern California, is the second most populous city in the United States. Known for its Mediterranean climate and the glamour of Hollywood, Los Angeles is a center for the entertainment industry. The city is home to famous landmarks such as the Hollywood Sign, the Walk of Fame, and the Griffith Observatory. Los Angeles is also known for its diverse neighborhoods, including Beverly Hills, Venice Beach, and downtown Law. Chicago, located in Illinois, is the third most populous city in the United States. Known as the Windy City, Chicago sits on the shores of Lake Michigan and is known for its stunning architecture, including the Willis Tower, formerly known as the Sears Tower, and the John Hancock Center. The city is famous for its deep-dish pizza and vibrant blues music scene. Chicago's diverse neighborhoods include the magnificent Mile Wrigleyville and the historic Bronzeville. San Francisco, located on the west coast of California, is a vibrant city known for its picturesque landscape, steep hills, and iconic landmarks, such as the Golden Gate Bridge, Alcatraz Island, and Fisherman's Wharf. The city is a center for technology and innovation, with nearby Silicon Valley housing many of the world's leading technology companies. San Francisco's diverse neighborhoods include Chinatown, the Castro, and Haight-Ashbury, which was the center of the 1960s counterculture movement. In the next chapter, we will explore the state of California, the most populous state in the U.S., and its major cultural and economic influence. Known for its diverse landscape, California is home to Hollywood, Silicon Valley, and renowned natural attractions like Yosemite National Park and the Pacific Coastline. Chapter 14. California Located on the West Coast, California is the most populous state in the U.S. and a major cultural and economic center. Known for its diverse landscape, it is home to Hollywood, Silicon Valley, and renowned natural attractions like Yosemite National Park and the Pacific Coastline. California's history is marked by the rich culture of its Native American inhabitants, who lived in the region for thousands of years before European arrival. Spanish explorers, led by Juan Rodriguez Cabrillo, first reached California in 1542. The Spanish established a series of missions along the coast in the 18th century which played a significant role in the colonization and Christianization of the indigenous peoples. In 1821, Mexico gained its independence from Spain, and California became a Mexican territory. The Mexican era saw the growth of large ranchos, which were vast land grants given to prominent families. The discovery of gold at Sutter's Mill in 1848 sparked the California Gold Rush, leading to a massive influx of settlers seeking fortune. The population boom and growing tensions between the United States and Mexico led to the Mexican-American War, 1846-1848, which resulted in California becoming a U.S. territory. California was admitted as the 31st state in the Union in 1850. 
the state's economy continued to grow rapidly, driven by agriculture, mining, and trade. The completion of the Transcontinental Railroad in 1869 connected California to the rest of the country, fostering further growth. Hollywood, located in Los Angeles, became the center of the American film industry in the early 20th century. The growth of the movie business attracted people from all over the world, making California a melting pot of cultures and ideas. Silicon Valley, situated in the southern part of the San Francisco Bay Area, emerged as a global center for technology and innovation in the 20th century. Companies such as Apple, Google, and Facebook have their headquarters in the region, contributing to California's reputation as a global leader in technology. California's diverse landscape includes beautiful natural attractions such as Yosemite National Park, which is famous for its granite cliffs, waterfalls, and giant sequoia trees. The Pacific coastline stretches for over 840 miles, offering breathtaking views and a variety of recreational opportunities. In the next chapter, we will explore some of the beautiful places to visit in the United States, from the Grand Canyon in Arizona to Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina, and the Florida Everglades. Iconic landmarks include the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore and the Golden Gate Bridge. Chapter 15. Beautiful Places to Visit The United States boasts a variety of stunning landscapes, from the Grand Canyon in Arizona to Yellowstone National Park in Wyoming, the Great Smoky Mountains in Tennessee and North Carolina, and the Florida Everglades. Iconic landmarks include the Statue of Liberty, Mount Rushmore, and the Golden Gate Bridge. The Grand Canyon, located in Arizona, is a breathtaking natural wonder that was formed over millions of years by the erosive forces of the Colorado River. The canyon is over a mile deep and up to 18 miles wide, with colorful layers of rock revealing Earth's geological history. The Grand Canyon was designated a national park in 1919 and attracts millions of visitors each year. Yellowstone National Park, established in 1872, is the world's first national park. Spanning parts of Wyoming, Montana, and Idaho, Yellowstone is known for its diverse ecosystems, abundant wildlife and unique geothermal features, including the famous Old Faithful Geyser. The park is home to the largest supervolcano on the continent, the Yellowstone Caldera, and has over 10,000 geothermal features. The Great Smoky Mountains National Park, straddling the border between Tennessee and North Carolina, is known for its lush forests diverse plant and animal life, and beautiful mountain vistas. The park is part of the Appalachian Mountain Range and is named for the smoky haze that often surrounds its peaks. The park is a UNESCO World Heritage Site and a popular destination for hiking and other outdoor activities. The Florida Everglades, a unique subtropical wetland ecosystem, covers more than 1.5 million acres in southern Florida. The Everglades are home to a diverse array of plant and animal species, including the American alligator, the Florida panther, and the endangered West Indian manatee. The Everglades National Park, established in 1947, is the largest subtropical wilderness in the United States and a UNESCO World Heritage Site. The Statue of Liberty, a gift from France to the United States, is a symbol of freedom and democracy. Located on Liberty Island in New York Harbor, the statue was dedicated in 1886 and represents the hope and opportunity that awaited millions of immigrants arriving in America. Mount Rushmore, located in South Dakota, is a massive sculpture carved into the Black Hills granite. Completed in 1941, the monument features the faces of four U.S. Presidents George Washington, Thomas Jefferson, Theodore Roosevelt, and Abraham Lincoln. 
These presidents were chosen for their significant contributions to American history and values. The Golden Gate Bridge, an iconic symbol of San Francisco and the West Coast, spans the entrance to the San Francisco Bay. Completed in 1937, the bridge was an engineering marvel of its time and remains one of the most photographed landmarks in the United States. In the next chapter, we will explore the diverse climates and ecosystems of the United States, from the scorching deserts of the southwest to the frigid tundra of Alaska, and from the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest to the tropical beaches of Hawaii. The United States is home to a wide range of environments, each with its own unique flora, fauna, and natural features. Chapter 16 Hot and cold, big and small. The U.S. spans a vast area, resulting in diverse climates and ecosystems. From the scorching deserts of the southwest to the frigid tundra of Alaska, and from the dense forests of the Pacific Northwest to the tropical beaches of Hawaii, the United States is home to a wide range of environments, each with its own unique flora, fauna, and natural features. The southwest is characterized by arid deserts, such as the Mojave, Sonoran, and Chihuahuan deserts. These areas experience extreme heat and little rainfall, with temperatures often exceeding 100 degrees Fahrenheit, 38 degrees Celsius, during the summer months. The deserts are home to unique plant species like the saguaro cactus, Joshua tree, and creosote bush, as well as animals such as the Gila monster, roadrunner, and desert tortoise. Alaska, the largest and northernmost state, is known for its frigid tundra and subarctic climate. Winters are long and harsh, with temperatures plunging well below freezing, while summers are cool and short. The Arctic tundra is home to animals such as the polar bear, caribou, and arctic fox, as well as unique plant life adapted to the cold, like the arctic willow and mosses. The Pacific Northwest, encompassing the states of Washington and Oregon, is known for its dense forests, abundant rainfall, and cool, mild climate. The region's coniferous forests are dominated by towering trees like the Douglas fir, western red cedar, and Sitka spruce. The lush, green landscapes support a variety of wildlife, including the American black bear, elk, and bald eagle. Hawaii, a chain of volcanic islands in the Pacific Ocean, boasts a tropical climate with warm temperatures year-round. The islands are home to unique ecosystems and a high degree of biodiversity, with many species found nowhere else on Earth. Among Hawaii's native flora are the iconic Hialeo tree, the silver sword plant, and various species of hibiscus. The islands support a diverse array of fauna, including the Hawaiian monk seal and an Hawaiian goose, and the colorful coral reefs teeming with marine life. The variety of climates and ecosystems found across the United States contributes to the nation's rich natural heritage. This diversity not only provides a wide range of habitats for plants and animals, but also offers countless opportunities for outdoor recreation and exploration, from hiking through the forests of the Pacific Northwest to basking on the sun-soaked beaches of Hawaii.